Okay, so here's a quick example um, using this setup here for integrating a vector field over a surface. So here's our surface. It's the part of this paraboloid here for x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 2. Okay, so that means z is between 2 and 4 here. Um, we basically got this, this dome shape. Here's our vector field. All right. Now, uh, the first thing you got to do is you want to decide how to parameterize the surface, right? Because you're, you're unlikely to use this formula here. You're more likely to use this formula down here. Um, there are one or two cases where you might choose to use this formula. Um, generally, this is something that's going to happen when you're dealing with, let's say, a planar surface where you know that the normal vector is going to be constant, right? The normal vector for a plane is always constant. And you're worried that you might not have the right magnitude for your normal vector. Um, you can always work with the unit normal just to play it safe. And sometimes you get lucky and this is going to come out to be, let's say, a constant or something very simple. And then you just have to work out the area of your planar surface and you're, and you're done. Um, now, there are kind of... Uh, there are two choices for parameterization here, right? Um, a, a natural parameterization to use whenever your surface is given as a graph, as this one is, right? Z is written as a function of x and y. A natural choice is to just use x and y as parameters. x, y, z is 4 minus x squared minus y squared, okay? That's one option. Uh, another option that you might choose, and then, and then you have to also specify the domain. So in this case, the domain would be this, right? x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 2. Um, another option that you might choose is you might do something like this. You might say, uh, so really I want to use r and theta here, but r is kind of already taken. Um, so let's call them u and v. Um, you might notice the circular symmetry and decide that you'd rather use polar coordinates. Fine, so you could do that. Um, so then x is going to be u cos v, y is going to be u sine v, and z is going to be 4 minus u squared. Um, with the appropriate ranges for u and v, right? u would go from 0 to uh, root 2, uh, v would go from 0 to 2 pi. So you can, you can choose whichever one of these you want to work with. Um, most of the time, the computations for the normal vector are going to be easier using the first one, okay? Working with x and y. Um, and here's the thing. You don't absolutely have to jump straight to polar coordinates. You can. There are sometimes reasons to do that. It certainly gets you set up for, for what you want to do in the end. Um, but remember that once you've parameterized, once you've worked out the dot product, right, once you've set up this integral, it's an ordinary double integral. So if you decide that you want to use x and y as your parameters, get everything set up, and then you look at it and you realize that this would have been much easier in polar coordinates, there's nothing stopping you from switching to polar coordinates after the fact. Okay? So let's see how that would look. Um, let's go with plan A. Let's see what the normal vector looks like. Okay? So my, my tangents are going to be 1, 0, minus 2x. and 0, 1, minus 2y. The normal vector is going to be the cross product. Okay, It's going to be um, minus 2x minus 2y and then 1. All right. Um, there. Okay. That should do the job. Let's make sure I didn't mess that up. I think we're okay. All right. Yeah, and that comes with a negative. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, plus. Plus, plus. Okay. Uh, now, if you find yourself working with graphs very often, you might notice a general pattern here that, that there's a normal vector that always works. Um, right? And we, I mean, we know a normal, we, we've, 
done this, going all the way back to the very first chapter, we know that a normal vector that we can always use, right, is the x derivative, the y derivative, and, and minus 1. What we have here is simply the negative of that. So there is a shortcut if you're, if you're working with graphs. You already know what a normal vector is, right? Um, and if you're using x and y as your parameters, you're going to get that exact same normal vector up to possibly a minus sign. Um, now, this problem is actually not quite well posed yet. I didn't tell you which direction I want the normal vector to be facing, right? Uh, before I can calculate the flux of this vector field across this surface, I need to know which way it's oriented. Um, and I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll go with the sort of upward orientation so that this is the right normal vector, okay? If we, if we wanted it, all the normal vectors pointing down and in, then we'd have to switch the signs so we get negatives everywhere, okay? So what the integral is going to look like in this case, right, the integral over s of f dot ds is going to be double integral over d, uh, where d, d is defined by this inequality here, right? This defines d for us, okay? And it's going to be well, first I need my vector field, f. So it's going to be, so, and actually, I don't have to do anything. This is convenient, right? The vector field doesn't depend on z. And when we're parameterizing, we're using x and y as parameters. So the only place where z comes into the picture is here. OK, we get that dot with the normal vector, 2x, 2y. 1. Okay? And then we're going to integrate with respect to x and y. So what do we get when we multiply this all out? We're going to get the integral over d of 4xy plus 6xy plus another one. Ah, convenient. We get 11xy. And then we're integrating with respect to x and y. OK. Um, you probably can guess the answer without doing any work. Just so happens the answer is 0 in this case, right? Why? Once we work out the dot product, x times y, uh, this is odd with respect to both x and y. Our region is symmetric with respect to the origin, right? So. You could, if you wanted to at this point, you could convert to polar coordinates, right? X as, say, R cos theta, right? Y as R sine theta. Let theta go from 0 to 2 pi. Let R go from 0 to root 2. You will find that the answer is 0 in the end. Um, you can still do it with polar coordinates, but if you notice the symmetry, obviously you save yourself a fair amount of work. Okay? Um, we'll, do, uh, we'll do another example that maybe takes a little bit more work, um, and then we'll go on from there.